popping in for a quick live stream. Had a quick couple minutes here, probably at least 10 or so, uh, before just, you know, having to get to my own day. We got some family in town and they ran down to downtown Dallas. So, um, you know, I'm just getting ready to get my day going. Um, I don't know about you guys, by the way, before we get started, something about the time changing always, 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 always throws off my Sunday, uh, regardless if it's pushing the time forward, rolling it back, whatever the case may be. I just wasn't really feeling it this morning, uh, getting up and, you know, getting the day going and whatnot. But um, yeah, yeah, as always, too, by the way, if you're new to me and new to my streams, my streams specifically are more so Q&A designed. Um, you know, we have a topic that maybe we'll go over, but there's never necessarily a set, um, you know, quote unquote subject that I'm sticking on. I'm very chat uh, friendly, I guess. Like I'm very into chatting with you guys. So don't ever feel like, you know, that you're just here to listen. You know, if you have any questions or anything, doesn't even, like I said, have to necessarily be on topic. Feel free to throw it in the chat. And by all means, I'll definitely you know, get to it as quick as possible. As I see, we got a few of you all starting to hop in here. Uh, hopefully, you all are having a great weekend so far and everything like that. And while we get some of you all tuning in, joining slowly but surely, um, I'll just go ahead and start hitting of today, you know. Um, and again, if you have any questions about not just the topic, but anything business related, uh, business, finance, that type of thing. Just let me know in the chat and I'll answer that for you. Um, good morning there, uh, Daniel. Uh, how's it going? How's it going? Um, yeah, this topic about, uh, you know, just the realities of owning your own business, starting your own business. I know a lot of you guys specifically who are subscribed and probably already tuning in this morning, um, you're more so looking at starting a pest control business or like pest and lawn lawn care, maybe just service business in general, um, that tends to be more up our alley, right? Because we own our own pest control business, been in business now, this is our fourth full year. And um, yeah, you know, after what, three full years going on four, definitely have learned some things. It's changed my perspective on a lot of things. Of course, you know, when we're first launching a business, right, one of the main things that we do is we just break on or not break on, uh, but break down the math, right? I know whenever I was first launching my pest control company, I started breaking down all the numbers about like, man, if I just sell an average service for just general pest control, right? You know, an average of a hundred or $120 a service, um, you know, get a full route of 500 customers, you know, we'll be set nice, right? And that's just a one man route. Of course, you all know that have been following me for a while. You guys know I have larger aspirations. I want to grow my company to at least $50 million by the time all said and done before a potential exit. Uh, who knows, might not even ever exit it if it gets to that level. But, um, you know, again, you just break down the math on how to get there. But the math is just one aspect of it. Then comes the realities of business, you know, putting in the work, uh, putting in the hours, putting in, and not just useless hours, because that's one thing that when it comes to uh, quote unquote entrepreneur culture, you know, everyone talks about, you know, putting in the time, putting in the time, putting in the time. But in reality, you know, if you actually break down how much time you're actually putting in your business in a given day compared to time that you're just kind of, I don't want to say screwing around, like wasting time, but, you know, maybe not optimizing your time in terms of, you know, where's your time best spent, then you would realize real quickly why your business isn't growing, you know, to the level that you expect it to. And not just that, but, you know, from the money side, which we'll get into here in a couple minutes, you know, if you are too quick to do stupid things like adjusting your lifestyle, uh, not reinvesting that money, not tracking the money. I always talk about that a lot. You have to have some systems in place to track where the money is going. I don't care if you have to spend money each month on a bookkeeper, whatever you need to do, be tracking the money. Um, because like we always talk about, I think I had a video, a longer video that I did about a year ago, maybe even a year and a half now, um, how wealth works, right? Those who do not pay attention to their money, that money's gonna flow to someone who does pay attention to it. Um, 
Let's see. Let's see. We got some people in the chat. It's hard to pass up money for rest. Oh yeah. No. 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 That. That. That's facts. That is facts. Um, that's why, like me personally, I'm trying. It's super, super hard for me personally. I'm trying to start taking more of uh, Christians call it like a Sabbath, you know, a day of rest where you just don't really do a lot. You may do some stuff around the house, um, might do your little, you know, your stuff like me. I'm about to go to the gym here in a second. That's why I got, you know, my gym clothes on. I'm just waiting for some laundry to get done real quick so I can, you know, transfer it over and all that stuff and then head out to the gym. So like I said, I had a few minutes to hop in here, but yeah, no, it's very hard you know, I got a phone call within a minute of starting the stream, a business call, um, even though, you know, I switched my hours on our Google page to closed Wednesdays now. Um, so I'm kind of interested as to where that call came from. I'll have to look into the call tracking and whatnot. But um, yeah, you know, this whole idea too of, uh, by the way, how's it going? Tropical Fruit Loops as well. Uh, my work-life balance is way better than when I was working at Big T. I'd put in 80 hours a week for them and maybe take home 7 or 8K a month only. Yeah, and of course, you know, that 7 to 8K a month, uh, depending on where you live too, right? If you're in a state like California or anywhere out west where there's a lot of taxes, right? That 7 or 8K doesn't look as hot as somewhere like Texas or somewhere in the Midwest where, you know, your state taxes are little to none. But like you said, if you're putting in 80 hours a week, you know, you start breaking that math down, you're making what? Um, about a thousand dollars every uh, 10 hours that you're working, right? Which, like we said, that's still not bad, right? That, no, that's good money. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm doing my math wrong. I got a feeling. I think I did my math wrong. Um, let's see, 80 hours, 8K. No, wouldn't that be about a thousand every 10 hours? Something like that. Either way, you know, you look at it and you're like, you know, damn, the money's good, right? Um, from the employee side, right? Because the employee side to the quote unquote entrepreneur, business owner, whatever you refer to yourself as, uh, when you make that transition, it's totally different. You know, your aspect on money starts to change because you start learning about, oh, there's way more taxes. There's a lot more that goes into it in terms of expenses. That's why, in my opinion, like I can only speak to the pest control industry specifically, but I know for a fact it translates into lawn care as well. Um, and I'm sure it does in a lot of other areas of business as well, like different categories uh, of business. You know, this idea of somebody jumping into the industry and just, you know, oh man, I don't get why, you know, Terminex or Orkin in the case of pest control, I don't know why they're charging 120, 150 or 200, depending on your area, uh, dollars per quarter when, you know, I could easily do this for $70. And it's like, well, because you haven't done it yet. That's why you think you can do that, right? And we all get caught up in that. You know, whenever I was first breaking down the math myself, I was starting my business before, you know, I launched and whatnot. I was still working at Terminix, studying for my exams, all that good stuff. Um, I did the same thing. I was like, man, $89 a quarter. Now, given this was back in like 2018, 2019, uh, before inflation just went crazy, right? But I was like, man, $89 a quarter, you know, I factored in the basic stuff, my chemical costs, my gas. You know, I did have the quote-unquote blessing of growing up with a dad who also owned his own business, um, you know, like a solo operator, solopreneur type of business as a construction worker. And I got to see him, like he would explain, like, yeah, no, I mean, I might make $13,000 or whatever the case may be on this job, but... I got to pay for this. I got to pay for the equipment. I got to pay, you know, my tools, you know, shit wears out over time. So you got to factor in wear and tear on tools, wear and tear on the vehicle, the tires, you know, uh, taxes, accounting, you know, just all this stuff. Right. Uh, so I had that knowledge already kind of going into business, but a lot of people don't, they just come out here and think, Oh, I can. And like I said, it's not just the pest control industry. I'm speaking on that because that's the industry that like our main business, our main businesses prefer pest management. Um, you know, where was I going with that thought? Yeah, a lot of people, um, they just hop out here and think it's going to be as simple as let me just undercut everybody by 20 bucks a quarter, 20 bucks a treatment, however you price it. We do ours month to month or yearly, but you know, they think all I got to do is undercut the price 
and calls are going to start rolling in and, you know, we're going to be rich, right? And then, you know, they go out of business within usually the first year or two, just like most businesses, right? When you look at the statistics, I haven't looked at them in a couple of years just because it doesn't really matter to me at this point. But if I recall something like, oh man, it's a large percentage. I know it's north of 50%. I want to say even like 80% uh, of businesses that start up will go out of business within their first five years. And then something like even like close to half of them will go out of business within their first year. And even of the businesses that will make it after five years, 60% of them either break even or lose money. Now, of course, we all know, those of us that have been in business longer than a year or two, we all know how that game works, right? Of course, you can write off so much stuff that you are at a loss or you're at break even. So I don't look too much into that statistic personally. But, of course, ideally, you want your business to still be making money. So, uh, by the way, sorry if the phone shakes occasionally. I'm just holding it with a pop socket at the moment. Um, Let's see. Not sure how it is in the USA, but a lot of people living in Canada are immigrants, and they rarely see past the price tag. Yeah, no, there's a lot of people like that. I actually just brought that up when it came to our Google ad conversation we had yesterday um, on yesterday's live stream. That was a really long live stream. It was like 90 minutes almost, but uh, we talked about like Google ads targeting, uh, target audience and all that type of stuff. And I took a whole zip code out of my Google ads because of the fact that, you know, we were getting leads from that zip code. I think it was like five or six since we launched the ad, but none of them were good quality. It was all, like you said, um, foreigners specifically, like Middle Eastern, Indian, um, you know, not to like single them out or anything. I'm sure that, you know, just based on that zip codes demographic alone, you know, Uh, It's not the hot. I was looking at everything because there's websites out there. You can see every breakdown. What's the average income for a zip code for a household? What's the average? Like you can literally look at every single data point based on zip codes, neighborhoods, all this type of stuff. And when we were just breaking that down and then, of course, like we said, the five to six leads from the get go that just simply were not qualified leads. We went ahead and just shut that whole zip code off and. Like you said, every single one of them, they were definitely foreign and they were looking at the price tag specifically. I still remember, as a matter of fact, one of them kind of, um, I'm not going to say pissed me off or anything, but you know, kind of rubbed me the wrong way. He was like, uh, are you the owner? And I was like, yeah, yeah, no, I'm the owner. You know, I'll be the one coming out and things like that for the time being. You know, we're a growing company, this and that. And he was like, oh, okay, so this is a newer, small company, you know, pretty much hinting at that I should be willing to go down on my price because we're a small company. Uh, and when he said new, I cut him off. I was like, well, no, we've been in business. I, I kind of exaggerated. We've been in business going on four years. I said, we've been in business for like five years. I was like, we're not a new company. I'm like, we're not desperate for customers or anything like that. And that pretty much wrapped up that conversation. He knew that from there I was not going to budge. And uh, that conversation ended. That was about a $39 lead. Um, And, you know, it is what it is at the end of the day. So, like you said, there are definitely those people. I think, you know, I don't know how Canada is when it comes to zip codes and things like that. But at least down here in the U.S., specifically in the Dallas, Texas area, there's a lot of um, zip codes. Like, my goodness, just in terms of my service area, there's probably something like 30 to 50 different zip codes Uh, almost to the point where some of them are like neighborhood by neighborhood gets its own zip code, right? So when it comes to our advertising targeting, we can really narrow it down and we'll do our research, like we said, due diligence about, you know, the types of income and things of that nature. A lot of them don't take into account cost of owning a business. They just think I'm making bank with their little one shot. Yeah, exactly. And like I said, you know, a lot of times you can't fix that mindset. That's why, you know, as bad as it may sound, I, whenever we do our ads, I will go ahead and target upwards of like 40, you know, as low as the the top 30 to 40% of U.S. income earners. But our main priority is usually the top 20% because usually the people that are hanging around that top 20% Sometimes top 40, which is why, like I said, we'll do top 40 as well on our Google Ads targeting. Um, But that top 20 specifically 
a lot of them are business owners, so like they totally understand. They don't give you a lot of flack about your pricing. Of course, you can't just go in there and price gouge them or anything like that. Like they're not stupid, but um, you know they my for the most part my richest customers are almost always. I mean, I have some customers that I I don't even see them. Like you know, I let them know that we're coming out to do the service and. You know, we might see them once or twice a year just by pure coincidence. You know, me coming as they're going or vice versa. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, a lot of that you can't really fix. Unfortunately, we can't fix. I mean, this speaks to a larger problem in this country that, you know, so many people are just financially illiterate. Um, they're just ignorant to just how the real world works in terms of business. Um, part of it is, you know, not to try to get like political or anything, but... A lot of the new, not even a lot of them, pretty much all of them, regardless if you're, you know, someone that watches CNN, Fox, whatever the case may be, all of them anymore are so bad about, uh, with inflation data, you know, they'll hit on, oh, such and such company made record profits this year. What they're not telling you is they're skewing that data. They're not saying net profit or gross profit. And every single freaking time I go and look at the company that they're talking about, they're actually referring to um, the gross profit. So they're not even talking about net. By the time you break down how much they pay employees, all their costs, all their losses, this and that and the other, um, you know, it comes out to a fraction of that. Now, could they still have record net profits? Sure. Uh, wouldn't be surprised, right? But, you know, it just blows my mind just the lack of financial literacy and just basic understanding of economics in this country, which, you know, speaks to the point that you were talking about, about a lot of them just don't take into account cost of owning a business. They just think that, you know, the price you charge minus taxes, that's what you make. And it's like, no, like, do you think I just get this shit for free? Like all the product and this and that and the other. Um, let's see. Oops. I got to transfer some money into our bank account. So, all right, we are back. I think, let me see. Are we still alive here? Yep. Okay. We are back. Um, time rolling. Yep. All right. Yeah. Like I said, sorry about that guys. I had to transfer some money. Gotta love when your spouse loves to spend money all the time. Um, where was I going with that? Yeah, no, just people in their financial literacy. That's what we were talking about. Financial literacy, lack of economic literacy, just, you know, uh, I, and I try, you know, and I'm sure you guys, those of you that own your own business as well, you know, you, you probably do the same thing whenever I can, you know, I try to let them know. Yeah. Like, I mean, I don't literally break it down step by step for them, but I'll tell them just straight up like, well, yeah, no, our price is factoring in the fact that we only use the best chemicals in the industry. Uh, we're constantly reinvesting into our learning and things of that nature taxes are going up, our product prices are going up, you know, all that type of stuff. But at the end of the day, like you said, Daniel, some people just, they're dense at the end of the day. Like you, you can only do what you can do with them. And, you know, part of it too is of course the economic conditions of our country right now. You know, I'm noticing, which I'm sure because it sounds like you're in Canada, probably same thing, if not worse going on in Canada. Um, but here in the U S specifically, People are pulling back now more than ever. I've had way more cancels over the last two months than I would say within the last year. And I would say I had more cancels within the last two, three months than the last two years put together. Um, and every single one of them said the same exact thing. We're looking at our budget. We're having to cut some things back. Uh, we will, you know, continue to use your service in the future. But right now we're having to pull back on some things. Um, and then same thing, even with leads coming in, you know, like you said, you know, they're kind of, they can't get, they can't get past that price tag. Some of it is because of the things we already discussed here, but also, uh, because of the fact that the economy is shit right now, not just us wide. Like I said, I mean, it's from what I understand, it's kind of worldwide right now. I heard there's a lot of shit going on in France right now. People kind of starting to stand up and, you know, push back on their government and their policies and this and that. And, you know, a lot of us have been calling that for a few years now since COVID popped off. But, you know, you got a lot of y'all just screamed at us, called us grandma killers and all this BS. And, you know, hey, uh, 
I don't know if y'all just heard, CDC just came out and said we should be treating COVID like the flu. Not going to preach on that, though. Uh, not the stream for that today. But, yeah, no, back to just, you know, what topics were we hitting on? We were hitting on, you know, just the finances of business, um, customer mindsets, and then also, of course, you know, we didn't hit on it a whole lot yet, but just that whole idea of work-life balance. Um, and I'm trying to think what else. Let me see. Tropical Fruit Loops. Um, lower economic zip code is a better indicator. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. 100%. Yeah. Um, and like the zip code that I was talking about that we took off of our Google ad specifically. Uh, like I said, we talked about that in yesterday's stream as well. So I'm not going to go like super into all the analytics and all that. But um, pretty much literally when you looked at, because I forget what the name of the website was that I used for that, but it'll break down every single data point of a zip code. And one thing that stood out specifically was, was I filtered it to show people that made what was it, 200,000, I think, as a household, not just one individual, but as a household, you know, which is still very good money. You know, you're talking $100,000 for a husband and a wife or whatever the case may be, um, $200,000 per household. This zip code specifically, it was like 14% or maybe even less. I think it was like 13 and change and I rounded up to 14. Um, and then literally zip codes surrounding it were like double, sometimes even pushing 50, 60%. Um, so, you know, like you said, you know, if you look at the lower economic, just data points in general, that will give you a glaring indicator of what to expect, but there are definitely, um, certain ethnicities that just it's in their culture. Like a lot of, I've even spoken to some of them, like we'll talk politics occasionally, like whenever I'm cool with a customer and I can tell we kind of you know, see at least something similar, right? Because uh, you don't want to piss off a customer, right? Um, and a lot of them will even tell me, specifically those in like Middle Eastern culture, they'll tell me like, yeah, no, we, we definitely, we look for a bargain. Like we're going to, you know, we're not going to give you like a super, super hard time. At least they claim, right? Uh, but, you know, we're going to try to haggle with you, try to get the best price, negotiate this and that. And, um, you know, they're... There's nothing necessarily wrong with that, but again, when you're talking about paying for leads and things of that nature, where you're, we're not talking just organic leads and, you know, oh, I wasted a couple minutes on the phone. We're talking you're wasting harder money. Um, you know, you definitely can't deny the different, um, I don't even want to call them stereotypes, but just how some cultures are, you know, just is what it is at the end of the day. But like you said, the number one that we look at from the get goes, of course, going to be um, what are the economics of that specific zip code? You know, are there any people at all that make 100000 a year in that zip code? If so, what's the percentage? Like I said, that one specific data point we were looking at, it was like less than 14% where all the surrounding zip codes were like 20 plus I think the next closest one to it was like 18 and change. So, I mean, you're talking some big differences, just zip code to zip code. And it makes sense, too, because I was an older part of town. So, you know, things are just cheaper out that way. But, um, yeah, yeah, like I was kind of starting to hit on, which I see we got like half a dozen of you all in here, too, by the way. So, hopefully you all are enjoying the stream so far. If you are, do me a favor, smash that thumbs up button. Um, let me know that you guys appreciate, you know, when we go live and all this type of stuff, I'll probably be wrapping up here in the next five to 10 minutes, um, getting ready to, um, head to the gym and get my day going. Hi, Griffin. How's it going, David? How's it going? How's it going? Um, what was I about to hit on? Yeah. Speaking of going to the gym, that actually transitions perfectly into my next point, which is, you know, that whole idea of work-life balance, not just work-life balance, but specifically, man, I'm trying to find my water and I don't know what I did with it. Um, not just work-life balance, but specifically handling stressful times. You know, if you're someone like me who has always kind of 
had anxiety. Um, some doctors will even claim depression. I don't call it depression. I don't ever, I've never really like quote unquote felt depressed or anything like that personally, at least in my own mind, right? Because to me, all of that stuff is just feelings at the end of the day. Um, not anxiety, but like depression and, you know, all that type of stuff. Because to me, depression and anxiety are two different things. To me, anxiety is something that, you know, because I'm speaking from my own personal experience on it. Anxiety is something where, you know, just to be vulnerable with you guys, like I'm anxious a lot of times when it comes to answering phones. I don't know what it is. I've never been uh, funny enough, right? Someone that goes on YouTube and things like that, you wouldn't think that I have anxiety type of stuff about anything communication at all. But, you know, I'm not a very great communicator. Ask my wife. <laughs> um, but like when my phone rings, my blood pressure increases, my hands start to get kind of sweaty. Um, I'm just not, which is so weird because it's something that has developed because when I first started my business, that was not there. Like I, I was super excited, right? You know, just getting that rush, the phone call, this and that, where at some point after about a year or two in business, that kind of changed. I don't know if it was because like I added more pressure to myself to increase my sales rate or like increase my closing rate, um, paying more for advertising than ever before. Like, I, I don't know what it was exactly, um, but, you know, there was some, there's something there, though, that, you know, when my phone rings, um, I just, the, the anxiety goes up, and it's something just weird. I, I tell people anxiety is like, to me, it's not a feeling, because to me, a feeling is something that you can literally control, like you can say, no, 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 like, I, I'm not, like, anger and things like that, like, it's stuff that you can get under control uh, very easily in a lot of cases if you're just willing to look in the mirror and be like, hey, I'm the fucking problem. I need to fix this, right? Um, for most feelings, right? Where to me, the whole depression and this and that, you know, it, it's not, to me, it's not the same as anxiety. Because, you know, I, I know people personally who battle with depression, like I'm sure a lot of you guys do as well. Uh, it's very common in, you know, entrepreneur, business owner, whatever you want to call it, culture, as a matter of fact, uh, anxiety, depression, all this type of stuff. And I know people who, like I said, I know me personally, I have my own battles with anxiety specifically, uh, but not depression, in my opinion. I've had doctors try to say that I have levels of depression in the past, and I just shake it, you know, I'm like, no, nah, I, I, I've never been depressed. Like, I've never been the type of person to just, you know be a, de a depressed individual, right? Like I said, I know people who are depressed in different levels of depression as well, um, to the point where I know a couple, unfortunately, who took their own lives and things of that nature. So like, I know a lot, I'm not a doctor, obviously, disclaimer, right? But, you know, to me, depression is just totally different. Like it's more of a feeling where anxiety is more of a it's something like again just speaking from my own experience on that you know the heart rate increases the palms get sweaty you know you just kind of shut down for a minute and like I said my own personal experiences is like when my phone rings a lot of times you know I'll tell myself all right pick up that phone and sure enough I let it ring to voicemail and then a lot of times I'll call them right back. That's what's weird. You know, I'll call them right back. I'll shoot a text real quick. Whatever the case may be, like I'll end up calling or talking to them, whatever the case may be, obviously, or I wouldn't make any sales. But, um, you know, I don't know. Yeah, that, that's anxiety for sure. And that is one thing that, you know, some people in this field, entrepreneurship, right, they beat it to death and I hate it. You know, they play this little victim role about, oh, everything that I've overcome and this and that and the other. And it's like, shut the fuck up. Like, d just stop it, right? Like, it's this whole victim culture, you know, that we got going on. That's why I don't really like to speak on the subject a whole lot. But, um, you know, I don't, the main reason I wanted to bring it up was I was kind of feeling it today. Like, I, you know, 
And like I said, it could have been the time change for all I know. You know, just it throws me off every time. I don't, I don't know why, but it just throws me off. And, you know, I was just like, man, I know I got this shit I need to do today. I just really don't want to do it. Right. And to a certain degree, that's discipline. You know, to me, all that stuff kind of intertwines uh, discipline, anxiety, this and that. I notice the times I feel most anxious is when I'm not doing the shit that I know I need to be doing. Um, I don't know if that makes sense. Like, you know, going back to the whole answering the phone thing, how I was telling you guys when the phone's ringing, especially when I'm busy, like my anxiety goes through the freaking roof. I'm like, shit, I need to answer that call, but I don't want to answer that call. Like there's so much mind chatter going on, but whenever I cut through the mind chatter and just answer that phone, the anxiety gone, you know, it's gone. Uh, as soon as I answer that phone and the phone conversation starts, it's gone. Um, same thing with, like I said, this morning, I knew I was like, man, I got shit I need to do. Um, wasn't even planning on going live. As a matter of fact, I was just like, man, I got like house stuff that I need to do. I didn't do much actual work yesterday on the business because we had family, uh, coming into town yesterday. So I was like, ideally I want to get a little bit of work done before we start the week. Um, and then I started looking ahead to this week and I'm like, I got an exclusion job that I don't really want to do in all honesty, but you know, I sold it. So we got to do what we got to do. But again, you know, you start lining up all these, like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I don't like the more you tell yourself again, from my experience, the more I tell myself over and over and over, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Like, this is going to suck. Like, of course I feel like shit. When I talk like that, you know, in my head, like my mind chatter, right? Where whenever I flip it on his head and just the moment I think I don't want to do it, I get my ass up and do it, do it, do it, whatever it may be. Um, like I said, the anxiety just seems to not necessarily every single time just completely vanish, but it at least goes down to a more manageable level. Um, let's see. Daniel said, it's come to the point that I need to quote a price of a one-shot service and try to get in the door and then talk to them. Talk about the guaranteed price. Um, it's not very common for me. Matter of fact, I just oddly enough sold my first time, my first one-time service in probably three to six months uh, just this past week for someone that I literally laid out the options to him. And then he was just like, yeah, I don't, I don't want a recurring service. I just want a one-time service. And I was like, okay, I'm glad I just went over all that for two or three minutes for no reason. But yeah, I mean, if you want a one-time service, it's going to cost this. Doesn't come, Our one-time services no longer come with any warranty. Um, you know, we're just trying so hard to get away from one-time services, but it was what he wanted. So, you know, we sold it to him. But that's how I get around it is, is we just immediately were like, okay, you have a couple options. You have this option and you have this option. And, you know, we force them to literally say, I don't want that. I want this. And then if they get to that point, then like we said, we'll go ahead and sell it to them. But I found by switching how we word it, because for the longest I've done, you have three options. You can pay for the year up front. You can pay as you go like month to month or um, just a one-time service. And of course, the one-time service rate went through the roof because everyone's like, oh, you do offer one-time services. That's what I want. Um, but ever since we started not even mentioning one-time services, not a lot of people bring them up really. Or if they do, I'm not going to say a lot because I would still say people definitely bring them up. But whenever I explain to them like, yeah, uh, we do offer one-time service, you know, for a home your size, it's going to be like 200 bucks, uh, which we don't, that's why I didn't bring it up because, you know, like we were just discussing, you can get a full year of coverage for, you know, if we did, if we quoted one for 200, it's probably like a 499 general pest for the year. Um, you know, I'm like, you can pretty much get close to half of your year out of that one, like in terms of the price comparison, that $200 could literally get you like half a year of protection uh, in terms of the ratio, right? So a lot of times, again, that will also talk them off that edge of, yeah, no, I guess that kind of makes sense. 
yeah, let's go ahead and do the one year. A lot of times those are the ones, as a matter of fact, that they end up just paying for the full year and they're done with it. A lot of people just don't like the idea of just adding another monthly bill. You know, we're in a subscription society where everything can be broken down into monthly payments now. Hell, I find whenever I go to shop for clothes online now, you can, you know, buy a shirt for $20 or pay $3 a month for 12 months or whatever the case may be. Like, it's just out of control anymore, the subscription society that, um, or not even just subscription, but just monthly payment society that we are in. Um, and those one-time service customers, a lot of times when you break that down to them, that like, yeah, you can do a one-time service. It's going to be 200 250 name your price, right? Um, the whole idea of that is, is to circle back to the fact that you know, yeah, you can do that, or you can pretty much pay just twice that amount, and you get a full year of coverage, and then once you break it down like that, they're like, oh, yeah, no, that's kind of a no-brainer. I'll just go ahead and pay for the year and move on, so, yeah, hopefully that kind of helps with that situation. Um, still love pest control. The field is my passion. Being a pest control company owner is truly living the dream in my mind. Yeah, no, yeah, that, and that's a good mindset to have too. Like, I always, that, that's speaking of, like David said, talking about emotions and stuff. It's so true, yeah. Um, and I'll get to your other, I'll get to your question here in just a second as well, David. But, um, you know, talking about what you were just saying there, Daniel, about, you know, it's truly living the dream, you know, keeping that in your mind, waking up each day with gratitude. Um, and I'm not going to say that, I mean, matter of fact, I'll be blunt with you guys. I am horrible at gratitude. It is one of the things in 2024 that I'm like really looking to, I'm not like the type to do New Year's resolution BS. Like, um, I'm just saying like this year, 2024, um, it's like one of my main goals to develop more gratitude uh, being more, <clears throat> being full, more like mindful, praying more, just being thankful, you know, like I said, just expressing gratitude, um, for all things, not just business, but in all things, because, you know, going back to what we were talking about a second ago with like anxiety, depression, just, um, we'll just say bad feelings and things of that nature, I find that whenever I practice gratitude more, I pray more, um, I'm practicing, you know, mindfulness, right? Uh, I tend to be at more of a state of what Zen, I guess some people will call it just a more calm, collected, happy in general mindset. And I love how you worded that, Daniel, you know, you said still love pest control. The field is my passion. Uh, being a pest control company owner is truly living the dream in my mind. And again, you hit the nail on the head in your mind. Like you just tell yourself like, this is awesome. I love being able to do this every day. And a lot of times as business owners, we can get caught up in the fact that, um, you know, just get caught up in the mundane, just every day waking up knowing, damn, I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to do that. Like I got all these fires I got to put out. I got to handle this. I got to handle that. Like it can get so easy to just kind of forget that you do love to do this. There's a reason you wanted to do this. Right. Um, so like we said, you know, just practicing gratitude, practicing mindfulness, doing exercises regardless if you're someone that likes to meditate or you're a person of faith like myself and you like to go away for a minute or two and prayer in prayer uh, be it in the morning or afternoon evening whatever the case may be um, I feel like that definitely helps as well and like I said just being up front I'm horrible about it because again it's so easy to get caught up in just the grind go 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 next thing you know bam it's midnight it's time to go to bed right like it's so easy to forget to take a step back, be mindful, pray, uh, be grateful, like have gratitude, right? So definitely something I'm trying to work on, which I think I mentioned about half an hour ago when I started the stream. Like one thing I'm trying to start doing is, is on Sundays specifically, uh, even though we might do a live stream on Sunday, you know, um, like we are today, I try to take most of Sunday as like a Christians call it like a Sabbath, right? A day where you just kind of have a day of rest, day of reflection, 
uh, day of gratitude, you know, just you're still doing some things that you need to get done, right? Cleaning up the house, uh, in my case, doing laundry, which is what I'm waiting for and doing this live stream while I'm waiting for it to get done in there. But um, yeah, I mean, that's part of my whole journey of trying to become better at practicing gratitude is, you know, just forcing myself to take a day because, you know, I am somebody who gets super caught up in the numbers. I'm like, man, why would I take a day off when I can gain an extra 52 days a year on my competitors, right? 52 days a year, that's an extra month and a half, almost two months of working time that I can get on my competitors. But, you know, in my opinion, as a person of faith, you know, you guys know I'm a person of faith, a uh, believer in Christ, all that, you know, I've read my Bible multiple times at this point. Well, I've never completely finished it, so I shouldn't lie. But I'm getting there. I'm getting there on finishing the whole thing. But I've read enough of it multiple times to know that, you know, we're not designed to be working seven days a week. We're designed to work six days a week, take a true day off. Not just a day off where you're still busting your ass out in your lawn, doing a bunch of lawn work and things of that nature, um, you know, but a true day off to replenish, refresh, reflect, uh, you know, praise your creator, you know, practice gratitude, all that thing, all those things. So, like I said, I'm trying to be better about that. Am I perfect? No. Um, and it doesn't even have to be Sundays, you know, any day. It could be Wednesday. I have a customer, matter of fact, who I tried scheduling her service. She's not a customer anymore because she moved, but I remember there was this customer in Dallas who I tried scheduling her service one day. It was a Wednesday, and she told me straight up, she's like, you can't come tomorrow. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, is there a reason why? Like, are, are you just not available? Like, uh, what, what's going on? And she was like, um, you know, I don't really talk a lot about it, but, like, I'm a person of faith, and, you know, I take my Sabbath on Wednesdays. And I was like, oh, like, that was the first time I was even kind of introduced to that idea. This was, like, three years ago. And... I was like, oh, I was like, that's actually kind of cool. I was like, I, I respect that. I was like, you know, I wish that I had the discipline and, you know, force, because that was, again, back when I worked every single day. Like, I, if I took a day off, it was usually to go on vacation or do something with my wife, whatever the case may be. But I never took a day off, like, consistently every single week. Um, and that's one thing I'm trying to do, because, like, I, I have to. I can... I can just feel it. It's just something that I've grown to understand as a business owner um, the longer I'm in business. Um, let's see. How's it going, Karate Chick? Hope you're having a great weekend. Yeah, I hope you all are having a great weekend, too. I see we got about 10 of you all in here right now. Hopefully you are enjoying the stream. If you are, do me a favor. Smash that thumbs up button. Um, let's YouTube know that you guys enjoy the stream. Um, might help some other people who maybe haven't seen our content before, you know, Tune, tune in and join us. Um, it's always awesome to hop in here with you guys. Let's see. David said, how do, you, how do you get rid, or not how do you get rid, let's see. How do you get customers that you've gotten, that you've gotten rid of their cockroach infestations to go monthly? Or I'm assuming you're talking about like German cockroach infestations, uh, you know, as a pest control business, like getting them to convert to some type of maintenance plan. Good luck is my answer. Um, I have had one or two maybe in my four years that, or three going on four years, that have converted. You know, they're like, we never want this to happen again. And I have to be like, hold up, slow your roll. Let me explain to you how German roaches work. There's nothing I can do to really prevent them as they are, you know, pretty much an imported pest, right? They don't come from the ground, like outside. So I have to break down to them how German roaches work. But yeah, no, it can definitely be hard to say the least because a lot of times these people aren't necessarily um, the cleanest. Don't get me wrong. I have had plenty of them where, you know, they're clean and they just happen to get a package from somewhere that was infested or they bought something off Facebook marketplace that was infested and they didn't know it until it was too late and you know, that does happen, but more times than not, it's people that just don't really keep up with stuff too well, and, you know, we've all had enough German roach jobs to know what I'm talking about, right? So, a lot of times, it's, 
you know, you do what you can as a sa as the salesman in that case, and you know, just let that unfold. And you know, if nothing else, you have all their contact information. You can import that into email and text message marketing, like Mailchimp is who we use, and you know, you can hit them with retargeted ads over and over, and maybe someday they'll hit you up, or you know, there's a good chance they may even get German roaches again and they'll call you up whenever they do, right? So, you know, the window is always open to converting them to some type of service and that's always the goal. I, that's why I always suggest you guys as soon as possible to get um, some type of remarketing software in terms of, you know, like MailChimp. Uh, I think there's another one out there called like Brevo, Brevo. They may have been bought out by somebody at this point, but there's a couple of them out there that are really good. They're not too expensive. You're talking usually 20 to $50 a month, depending on all the features and nuts and bolts that you want. So now let's see. Daniel says, now I see the pricing is very different in the USA compared to Canada. We price most of our guaranteed services between $800 and $1,200, and we give three-month guarantee for cockroaches and bed bugs. So um, when you say $800 to $1,200, and then you say three-month guarantee, I feel like I'm getting confused here. So when you're saying $800 to $1,200, Daniel, are you referring to the like the quarterly service? Or are you referring to, like you said, like a German cockroach or a bed bug treatment? Because when it comes to German cockroaches and bed bugs, I would say my average pricing is pretty close to that. My minimum is usually six five ninety five. It's pretty much six hundred bucks uh, for a German roach job at the minimum. That comes with three treatments over a nine to ten week period. Um, bed bug, of course, you know, bare minimum is usually eight hundred. That's if we're doing like just one room. Um, it's usually the bare minimum, seven ninety five to be exact. And then, I mean, I've had some as much as two thousand plus as well. So, like I said, I uh, just need some clarification if you're talking about quarterly service pricing or if you're talking about those specific uh, what they would call like targeted treatments. Um, how's it going there, JVJ? How's it going? Hopefully, you're having a good morning, or I guess it's afternoon at this point. David said 100. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, see, we got a dozen of y'all in here. We got two likes, though. So hopefully, like I said, hopefully you guys are enjoying the stream. If you are, smash the thumbs up button. I see on my screen, it's almost like TikTok anymore. It has where you can do the hearts and do the 100s, this and that and the other. But for some reason, that doesn't count as a like. It's very weird to me how YouTube... YouTube's definitely still different than TikTok as much as they're trying to be like TikTok anymore. We basically go back every two weeks for German roaches, same here, and every three weeks for bed bugs. Um, they are not targeted treatments, they are full treatments. So like you're doing a general pest treatment while you're also doing a bed bug treatment? Because what I mean when I say targeted treatment, um, Daniel, is because you're targeting that specific pest. Like, of course you're treating the you know, entire home or business, you know, whatever the case may be. Uh, but when I say targeted treatment, I mean um, like a targeted pest, if that makes sense. Um, let's see. Once the problem gets resolved, we do not return unless the customer calls. Yeah, so that sounds, so the only difference between me, because like I said, we sell our German Roach uh, treatments as bundles of three. We will let them pay as they go if they wish. Um, but that's by far the most expensive option. The bare minimum price on that is two seventy five per treatment if they decide they want to go that route. Um, otherwise, like I said, the bare minimum, it usually starts in terms of the three treatment plan over a nine to 10 week period is usually, or eight to 10 week period is, um, like I said, bare minimum five ninety five. I've had some as high as like nine ninety five even. Very rare, that's usually a bigger house, like, you know, size of my house, like 3,000 square foot or more, but, and very infested too. A lot of times infestations I run into are like, primarily in the kitchen, dining area, things of that nature. 
Um, and then the bed bug, what we do is, is we come out, we do the bed bug treatment, and it comes with a 90-day warranty on it. They have to contact us within that 90 days. Um, even if it's day 90, like we'll, we will warranty it, even though technically by the time we come out, it's probably going to be day 91, 92, 93 whenever the heck we get out there as long as they let us know within that 90 day period that hey you know we got bed bugs then we will go out there do the inspection assuming we find bed bugs we'll go ahead and retreat um that entire area i know a lot of companies when they do that they'll just like retreat that one little spot we'll usually at least retreat um that entire living space, so like a living room, a bedroom, whatever the case may be, we'll go ahead and, you know, do the whole thing, if that makes sense. Yeah, we treat for the pest in question. Okay, so yeah, yeah, you mean the same thing as me then. Um, yeah, pr pretty similar, pretty similar process there. Overall, um, oh, let's see. Trying to think if there's any other topics within this stream that I was wanting to hit on. I know we, of course, dove into a little bit of like the whole anxiety, depression thing, which um, is always not a it's not a topic we talk about a lot on this channel. Um, like I said, I just felt like the reason I don't ever really talk about that stuff is, like I said, it's beat to death online. So many people talk about how you know, they're a victim, they got, you know, this depression, this anxiety, I was gaslit by this person today, and I need a mental health day, and this and that, like, it, it, it's just out of control in today's culture, especially on social media, so for the most part, I leave it alone, but, you know, ever since I've gone off of my, because a lot of you guys may not know, like a lot of you guys do know, because I did bring that up, but a lot of you guys don't know that I was on uh, Paxil for shit, off and on for probably two years, ever since I started having those crazy random little anxiety episodes and things of that nature. Um, but I went off of it altogether. It's been a process. I uh, started phasing it towards the end of the year, um, went down to like half a dose for shit, probably about two months. And then, uh, for about the last month now, I've been completely off of everything and the withdrawal, it has been real. I'll say that the withdrawal has been awful. Um, to the point where I was even telling people closest to me, like, you know, I've been experiencing some different types of just feelings that not like suicidal any of that crazy crap but um you know just just different things in general that have affected work big time and j just more so annoying for me because you know like i say i'm not the type of person to really sit around and you know use that shit as an excuse for me to not get my shit done and things of that nature like i always preach on this channel and we were even talking about a little bit ago the more discipline you're gonna be um, anytime you start to have those type of negative feelings and things like that, I always say, go back to the things that ground you in your discipline, have some type of, I'm not going to say a routine per se, but like for me personally, it's going to the gym, getting my diet right, stop eating bullshit, processed sugars, this and that and the other, um, cutting out things like the red 40 and this and that. And the other. I mean, there's so much here in the U S specifically, Y'all need to look up sometime all the different chemicals that are in our foods that are banned in, like, Europe. Like, it'll blow your freaking mind. Like, Skittles, last I heard, are pretty much banned in Europe uh, or in most of Europe. I don't know about, like, every single country, but pretty much all over there, it's banned. Um, there's just so much stuff that, like, we put in our bodies, and then when we're not working out, we're not getting physical activity like we need to, we're not living the human experience that we were put on this earth to live when we're just sitting here doing this and doing this. Like, and then in nowadays doing this, putting on freaking binoculars that just, 
there's no re- there's no wonder that you know anxiety, depression, this and that and the other is at all time high. Like we're we're literally not living the human experience that we were put on this earth to live. So that's why, me personally, anytime I start to, even while I was on uh, Paxil, you know, anytime because that shit isn't bulletproof. I don't care what any doctor says. A lot of times, all that shit does is numb your sense of feeling. I mean, there'd be times where my wife would even be like, damn, like you're like a zombie right now. Like you're not reacting to anything. And I'd be like, yeah, like I'm here. But like, that's what that shit does to your brain. So, you know, even when I was taking that stuff, I would still have days or weeks even uh, where I just wasn't feeling it. Right. And when those times happen, you have to have some type of thing to fall back on. Like I said, for me, it's focusing on getting my workouts in bare minimum five to six a week, uh, three to four, like on a super busy week. Uh, But ideally bare minimum five to six workouts per week, not just little bullshit workouts. We're talking workouts where my heart rate is getting up in the 150s, 160s, even 170s uh, briefly. Uh, Of course, be careful with that. Consult a doctor, blah, 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 blah. You guys know that whole spiel. But you know, have something to fall back on. For a lot of you guys, if you haven't really worked out before or you haven't really done a whole, like you haven't really taken your health seriously, you may want to try a program like, um, I'm trying to think of free ones that are really good. Uh, 75 Hard, I can't believe it took me a minute to think of that one. 75 Hard is a really, really good one. You guys know I've mentioned um, Andy Frasilla on this channel a couple times. He has a uh, a controversial podcast from time to time is called Real AF, uh, but he has a lot of good business content on there as well. And he is actually the creator of this program that's totally free. It's called 75 Hard. And to give you guys the gist of it, you have to do two 45 minute workouts per day. One of them has to be outside. Uh, it doesn't have to be some crazy, you know, literally take some weights outside. Like you can literally do a walk. Um, I think some people now are doing, was it called rucking or trucking? Something like that where you put like a weighted vest on and, you know, walk. Um, Just some type of outdoor exercise for 45 minutes. You have to follow a diet. Um, You can't drink alcohol, can't smoke weed. Uh, If I remember, you're even supposed to take a two-minute cold shower, if I recall. Uh, You know, it's a program, right? And you have to do that for 75 days straight. And for a lot of people, that program... I've actually done it two or three times. Oddly enough, I've never completed it. But I think the furthest I got was like 45 to 55 days. Um, It might have been like 47 to be exact. The closest I got was like two years ago. And even just doing that alone was like enough. Because if you think about it, how long do scientists say that it takes to build a habit? They say it usually takes about 20, 21 days seems to be the consensus. So even if you fail doing something like a 75 hard, but you get, say, 40, 50, 60 days into it, you're going to build a lot of good habits that you probably never had before. Or you're someone like me who, you know, you've always kind of worked out a little bit, but, you know, you needed to sharpen, you know, there's the laundry done. Uh, You need to sharpen your... Uh, skills and or not skills but sharpen your discipline skill if that makes sense because I, I guess it is a skill you know discipline is a skill it's not something that you're just born with I mean you can lose discipline just as quick as you gain it don't believe me go work out for I mean I'm a prime example I lost 50 pounds and then I got off my shit for a little bit because again I got I went into hyper obsessed mode with the business and fucked off on my diet, my routine. I would still work out occasionally, maybe one to four days a week, but I wasn't consistent with everything. And slowly but surely, I gained pretty much all that weight back. Now, of course, you know, I actually my muscles even look like shit now. Can't even hardly see them in there. But to be fair, I don't have a pump either. So, Um, but no, no, like I'm not in my best shape right now. And that's why within the last month or so, I've been getting more serious, getting back on my shit. Me and my wife actually made a little bet with each other who can lose 20 pounds first uh, because she knows I'm an ultra competitive person. And I'm like, you know, talking shit like, I'm going to kick your ass, this and that, right? Um, But my whole point to circle back to, you know, 
the negative feelings and not wanting to do what you need to do, whenever you start to feel those type of feelings creeping up within you, go back to those actions that help you build that discipline because whenever you regain discipline, you're going to start to regain momentum. And once you gain momentum, it's like nothing can stop you. I don't, it's hard to explain the power of momentum. I think I've talked about momentum even once or twice before on this channel. Like when I can feel that like, oh shit, like I'm in a zone, I will literally work every waking hour, which like I said, I know it's not healthy technically. And that's why I'm trying to force myself to take at least one day off per week, even when I'm in those zones. But at the same time, when you gain momentum, especially in business, like you'll just know it because like everything's firing on all cylinders. You're closing more sales than ever before. Your business, you know, in terms of your outlook is just going like in a straight up line. Um, you know, it, it it's hard to explain. Anyone that's experienced true momentum in business can probably speak even better because... You know, I'm not the most well-rounded spoken person or anything. You all probably know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, let's see. Tropical Fruit Loop says, diet is huge, brother. I'll eat basically a keto diet with a couple fruits, no starchy carbs. Um, second brain is in the gut. Exactly. Yeah, no, your brain and gut are literally connected to each other. So it's like, like we were talking about a second ago, whatever you're putting in your system um, it'll, it 100% will affect, you know, um, what's going on in your brain. That's where brain fog and, you know, why do you think those of you in the U S specifically probably experience this a lot? Why do you think whenever you go out to, um, what's a good dessert place, um, cold stone ice cream, or, uh, some of y'all may not have this place yet, but nothing but cakes, you know, it's a cake place. Uh, with really good cakes, by the way. My God, they're ridiculous. But again, bad for you. Um, or what's another one that a lot of people may have? Um, man, a any type, name your place, right? Even dinner places, you know, when you go out to eat in general, why do you think you feel a lot of times, if not like shit altogether, at the bare minimum, you feel extremely tired usually. They call it carb crash a lot of times. Because literally your brain and your gut are connected. And this isn't like bro science. This is literally basic knowledge. But for some reason, we don't we don't take it seriously. Like we choose convenience over a better life. And it's just, I don't know. I don't know. It's just weird. Don't believe me. Go look up pictures of... Uh, People on the beach in the 1980s versus people on the beach in 2020. You'll see what you, you'll see the uh, real life deal right there. Uh, how's it going there? Eric, Eric said, I stopped smoking cannabis daily, was affecting me lately, um, not, was affecting me lately, not getting all my shit done, plus was starting to give me anxiety. That's interesting. Day six, day six of weed free. That's awesome, brother. Uh, check out Brain MD. Oh, yeah, I've heard of Brain MD. Uh, Brain MD products by Dr. Amen. Natural supplements been helping with focus and anxiety. Yeah, no, that, that's funny you mentioned that, actually. I think I still have, I think it's almost empty. I think it's down to like maybe one or two servings. But I remember a couple years ago, I was taking like his fish oil supplement because uh, it's a really clean one, really clean, really affordable, and um, some of the best shit, too. Um, I'll show you guys kind of what I consider to be my power stack here. Um, like I said, I'm not I'm not taking this right now, but we were, but I was. This one's his uh, happy. What's it called? Happy saffron plus. Um, that one is supposed to be really good for like mood support. If that makes sense, you know, kind of like the whole depression, anxiety, this and that. But here is my. Here's the really magic shit right here. Oh, I'm not even gonna say magic. Speaking of which, I don't have my Irish sea moss. I need to go and get some more of my Irish sea moss. One thing I started taking, speaking of Andy Frisilla, he owns this company, First Form. Um, I started taking, it's a brain supplement as well. It's a Adrenal Restore. 
Um, tell you all what's in it here. Of course, you got the basic stuff like vitamin C, uh, but it has chamomile flower extract, um, shatarvi. Ooh, I'm probably butchering that. Um, root, uh, go to cola. Let's see what else is in here. Ashwagandha, of course. Or what else is in here? Some word I can't pronounce is some kind of berry. Um, there's a whole bunch of things in here. If you all want to look it up, th this is it right here. You can take a screenshot if you want. Like I said, it's just called Adrenal Restore. You're supposed to take it twice a day. Um, the problem for me is you're supposed to take it with food. And you guys know I fast. So a lot of times I can only take it once a day. Um, but that's something that I started taking whenever I got off of Paxil. Um, of course, you know, you got a good fish oil supplement. The main thing you want to look at is on the back of the bottle where it says EPA and DHA. EPA specifically is what you want. So this has 1,200 milligrams of EPA. Um, like I said, DHA is good too. It's got 900 milligrams. So combined 2,100 milligram where a lot of these will say that, you know, they're a high milligram like this even. It says 4,080 milligrams. It's not 4,080 though. The most important shit it has, it only has 2,100, but that 2,100 is the best shit that you need. So whenever you're looking at like fish oil supplements, uh, and those of you that are just tuning in probably wondering what the hell, what, why are we talking about supplements? Uh, we're talking about just um, supplementation for your body because obviously your body is your most important asset for your business uh, as the business owner. But my whole point with fish oil specifically is make sure you're getting a good quality one. This one I think is on Amazon. As a matter of fact, it's like, man, what was the price of this? I don't even remember now. But it comes with, uh, you know, 40, 50 days worth for whatever the hell the price is. Um, let's see what's up next. Next is a methylated super B vitamin B uh, complex, B vitamins. Of course, B vitamins are a must pretty self-explanatory one that is heavily slept on but those of you that are like quote-unquote bodybuilders or work out a lot probably heard of this one creatine monohydrate specifically um, having a good creatine is a must there's a lot a lot a lot of scientific studies actually showing that um, it'll help with brain activity and what was it like something about helping with like alzheimer's and things like that uh, but, of course, it's good for working out, too. It helps uh, increase, what is it, ATP and your muscles, you know, help muscle repair and, you know, thus get some gains in the gym, right? Lastly, of course, got to have your vitamin D3, right? Vitamin D3, 5,000 IUs. I always take a bare minimum of five to 10,000 IUs per day. In the winter when it's really cloudy, of course, it's windy or uh, sunny today. But anytime it's like cloudy, dreary, those type of days, I'll even take 10 to 20,000 uh, I use. I have some other stuff in there too. Um, when I'm fasting, I have a like an electrolyte uh, salt tablet type of thing that I'll take. Because those of you that fast, you probably know. Um, go to the gym while you fast. Tell me how fun that is. You start cramping like a motherfucker. Especially... Uh, whenever oh whenever you're doing leg workouts at least for me specifically when i go to the gym do a leg workout while i've fasted i'm um, at least 10 to 18 hours in or more oh my god the cramps are unbearable but yeah when i take those uh, salt tablets along with like a good electrolyte powder you know mix it in some water um hell even if you can't afford that stuff even just um Oh, what, Himalayan, I think, or Celtic? Uh, or I may even be pronouncing that wrong. It's a type of salt. There's some good salts out there that you can literally just put the smallest little pinch of it. Like, you don't even really taste it. You just put a little pinch of it in your water, and that'll help big time with uh, keeping yourself hydrated, too. That's a good tip for those of you in the pest control industry, too, because um, when it's 100 degrees out there, staying hydrated, of course, is of utmost importance but yeah man eric that's awesome that uh you're six days sober on uh marijuana that's awesome let's see what else we got brain md that's right iris sea moss is good stuff black seed oil as well uh, i have not taken black seed oil my mother-in-law was actually 
telling me that she was taking it. She said it tastes god awful, <laughs> but she was like, it it definitely works pretty good as well. Uh, how's it going there, uh, Malik? Malik Brian, uh, Pedialyte, bro. Yeah, I mean, Pedialyte isn't bad. In all honesty, instead of Pedialyte anymore, uh, if you're going like just the straight up bottled stuff that you can just get from the store. Um, oh, Gatorade now has, what's it called? Like Gator Light or something like that, which is, you can tell. It, it's like Gatorade's competitor of Pedialyte. Um, it, it tastes like how Gatorade used to taste 20 years ago. Uh, those of you that remember the old school Gatorade with the little, the skinny bottle with the little twist cap that you could twist back and squeeze it all that. Back when Gatorade actually tasted like a electrolyte drink, that is what the new, I think, like I said, I think it's called Gator Light or Gatorade Light, something of that nature. Um, it is expensive. Oh, man, it's expensive. It's like 3 or $4 per bottle, um, depending on where you get it from. But that stuff works pretty good, too. My only thing with Pedialyte is, is it has a lot of unnecessary, same thing even with the Gatorade version, too. A lot of these have just a bunch of extra unnecessary BS added to it. Um, where, you know, if you just take some type of salt tablet, uh, pinch some Celtic salt or even Himalayan salt, any type of salt, really, uh, like you said, don't go overboard. We're talking just a pinch, um, like a teaspoon. Um, it'll, it, it'll help big time for sure. But yeah, when you're in a rush, something like Pedialyte, Gatorade Light, or Gator Light, whatever the hell they call it, those type of drinks, they, they definitely help as well. Um, oh yeah, and then lastly, one I just started taking as well, let me go ahead and show you all that actually, man, Andy Frisilla bear sent me some money my way as much as I'm showing his products today, um, let's see, where's it at, we started taking a magnesium supplement as well, another first form product, um, as you see here, good old peach ring flavor, believe it or not, it does, I'm not going to say it tastes like peach rings. I'm not even going to bullshit y'all. It tastes like peach though. It tastes like a very, very sweet peach flavor. Like it, it tastes good. A lot of these supplements, they taste like shit. That's one thing I'll tell you about First Form. I've never had a company, Ghost comes pretty close, but Ghost puts a lot of bullshit in their products as well. Uh, but in terms of pure taste quality, I've never found, this is a blueberry muffin like protein powder I got as well. I've never found a company with like better tasting and especially for the ingredients, you know, not just quality of taste, but quality of ingredients. I've never found a company better than um, First Form. Like I said, in terms of taste, Ghost is probably their closest rival when you're talking about like the supplement industry in terms of taste, but in terms of quality of taste and quality of ingredients, um, to me, first form just blows the doors off. I know we kind of got on a bit of a tangent here, talk about supplements and whatnot. But like I said, guys, you know, the, the supplementation, I mean, that's a real thing as well. Because like we talk about, you know, when we're talking about anxiety, depression, discipline, this and that, a lot of that relies on your body, the things you're putting into your body. Um, the amount of work that you're putting in, you know, be it in the gym or whatever the case may be, just taking care of your body. And if you're not going to take, if you're not taking care of your body, I don't care how well you do it, anything else. If you're not taking care of what you're putting into your body the fuel that you're giving your body, it, it doesn't matter anything that you do because you're, you're still going to feel like shit at the end of the day. Like it just, it, it is what it is. That's why, like I was saying about the medications that I was taking, I could tell. I mean, those things aren't, you know, silver bullets or anything. They're just they're they're a ver they're a supplement. I mean, they that's exactly what they are. They are a supplement themselves. They're there for to help you get through, you know, whatever little mental issue you may be going through, regardless if it's depression, anxiety, panic attacks, whatever the case may be. They're there to you know help you, but. If you're only taking that and then you're stuffing your face full of Cheetos and Skittles and Sour Patch Kids, not going to the gym, drinking Monster Energy drinks, like, you know, just treating your body like shit ultimately, 
filling your body full of fucking poison, you know, how do you think that one little pill is going to make a difference at all at the end of the day? It's not going to do anything but turn you into a freaking zombie. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, like I said, I didn't even realize I've already been on here over an hour. That's crazy. Um, let's see. Tropical Fruit Loop says, I think running makes me an indestructible salesman. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. Running, I hate running, man. I, believe it or not, I, I started to try to like run, like become a daily runner or at least a couple days a week runner. And I did it. It was part of 75 hard, as a matter of fact. I'd put my backpack on. I'd have multiple waters with me because of how long I was running since I would do it for, you know, 45 minutes. And I was like, and I did it in the summer on top of that. Those of you in Texas know summer is brutal. And I was doing it in the summer. We had this park where it was about a quarter mile to run around the park. So I'd run around it four or five, sometimes even more times. I would run from my house there first, run around it a few times, and then run back home as well for my 45 minutes outside. Um, it, uh, it, it. Um, yeah, I didn't like it. <laughs> um, I do like doing things like what I will do instead is I will do a Stairmaster at the gym. That's kind of my warm up that I'll usually do for bare minimum six to 15 minutes, depending on how much time I have. Like yesterday, whenever I was running late for our stream, I was, I just had enough time to do Stairmaster only. So I was on the Stairmaster for like 14 minutes and then I had to hop off and get back home real quick so I can do the stream for you guys, but I'll do that, and then I'll do it at like a level six to eight, depending on, you know, again, my time, how I'm feeling that day, um, do my legs hurt from like a leg workout the previous day, um, usually on those days too, like if my legs are extremely sore from a leg workout, like say I just increased the weight or something of that nature uh, when doing squats or whatever the case may be. What I'll do instead is um, I'll walk the treadmill. I'll usually do it at three to three and a half miles an hour at like a level nine to level 15 incline. Again, just depends on how sore those quads and glutes and all that, how sore they're kind of feeling, which pro tip, it's gonna sound obvious, if you don't want your shit being sore the next one to three days after a leg workout, one, Work out your legs more. Oh, who would have thought? Um, two, drink more water. Uh, three, um, oh my gosh, what was I going to say for number three? Stretch. Duh. Uh, like I said, most of it's just common sense, but a lot of us just don't take it seriously. Like we're like, you know, we'll go in and we'll, okay, I'm going to stretch this for five seconds. I'm going to stretch this for five seconds. Okay, I'm good to go. Let's do it. But no, I mean, literally take a solid Bare minimum, two to five minutes at the minimum. Stretch your shit out at the beginning. And then at the end, another two to five minutes. Stretch your shit out at the end. Drink a lot of water. Get your salt tablets in. Um, oh, you know, just, just like I said, a lot of common sense shit. And then, like I said, when in doubt, work out your legs more. If you're not working your legs out bare minimum one time a week, ideally twice. But if you're not working out your legs at least once a week, don't be surprised when you got DOMS in the morning. For those of you that don't know what DOMS is, it, it just means delayed onset, um, was it muscle soreness or offset, offset, onset? whatever, uh, muscle soreness. And it's real. I mean, why do you think anytime you don't go for to the gym for three, four weeks or, you know, in some cases, three, four, five months, right? Um, depending on the stage of life you're in. Um, why do you think when you don't go to the gym for a long period of time, when you go back that first week or two, you're sore as shit, right? Because you haven't, your body's not used to that. You have delayed onset muscle soreness and it's a very real thing. That first week or two that you're working out, um, it's going to suck. That's why I told my wife, cause she's not a big, um, you know, weight lifter. She doesn't really do a whole lot of working out like with, you know, like bodybuilding type of working out. And when she does, she's like, oh, I can't hardly walk. And I'm like, the more you do it, it will, it, it will go away. Um, you just got to you gotta do it. JVJ says, if you don't like to run, walk. Exactly. Yep, exactly. That was what I was just mentioning is, you know, like me, I'm not a big runner. Um, 
there was a minute there that I thought I was going to try to run a marathon. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't. Boy, that would have been brutal. Uh, that would have been embarrassing. But uh, I was even training for it. Like I said, it was part of 75 hard, my little um, regimen that I was doing. You know, I was like, I was preparing for like this marathon. And I was like, ah, I, I let the bitch voice win at the end of the day. What can I say? You know, I... I I just didn't want to do it, and I stopped doing it. I think it was some dude. I think, like, my shin was starting to hurt. I don't know what it was, but it may have been because I was running literally every single day. I don't know, but, like, my right shin was, like, literally, if I would touch it, it'd be super sore. So I was like, nah, this ain't for me. I was like, this ain't for me. I need to, and then I even read that, you know, yeah, you probably shouldn't run every day. You should run, like, every other day or every you know, two or three days a week, you shouldn't be running every single day, so there's that, right, you know, you got to do it the right way as well, but um, recovery is crucial, soak in the tub, sauna, all that will help, yeah, no, I keep debating getting the membership in my gym, they have what's called a infrared sauna, and the infrared sauna specifically, um, it's like an add-on that you can like add on to your membership, and it's like I think thirty or twenty-five dollars a month to add it on. So I'm like, you know, Mr. Cheap Ass here. I'm like, do I really want to spend an extra twenty, thirty dollars a month on an infrared sauna, or do I want to, you know, when I have a good month in my business, do I just want to purchase my own little at-home sauna that I can just plug into the garage and you know, go that route, I don't know, but yeah, I do love saunas as well, the infrared ones specifically, they both have the role, steam is good, infrared's good, they both have different, you know, benefits, but I think the, I think I like infrared the most, it definitely, in my opinion, has the best benefits of the different types of saunas and things of that nature, but yeah, no, um, like I said, I wasn't even planning on hopping on this long originally. We've already been on for almost an hour and a half already, and I'm pretty sure my laundry is definitely ready to be changed over now, uh, but I wanted to hop on here, and like I said, just kind of more so just have a conversation. Like I always say, if you hop into my live streams and you see that I'm streaming from my phone like this vertically, um, there's a good chance we're just coming in, having a conversation, um, it can be on topic, off topic. I think we've stayed on topic for the most part today. I mean, we've gone in depth on like different things within each topic. Um, you know, like we said, we were talking about, of course, business numbers, all that type of stuff. But then we were also talking about a lot of things that people either A, avoid altogether, including myself. Like I said, I don't talk about it a lot. Um, either people talk about it way too much or they avoid it altogether. The things like uh, work-life balance, handling stress, anxiety, um, all that type of stuff. Jay West said, can somebody help me, please? Help you with what exactly? Um, But yeah, like I said, we're we're probably going to be going ahead and wrapping it up for today. Um, We just wanted to, like I said, if you're new to my streams... We go live um, every so often from the phone, like a vertical standpoint, more so like a TikTok live stream. And when we do, we're just coming in, just having a conversation, you know, about various topics. And then, of course, we have our live streams that we do once a week, just answering your business questions overall. Don't have nothing to sell you or anything like that. I have a couple free groups that you guys can join. If you're interested in joining those, for those of you that are looking to like start and grow your own business this year, um, for those of you that don't know who I am, of course, my name is Griffin Thomas. I own my own pest control company specifically in the Dallas, Texas area. Uh, We've been in business now. This is our fourth full year. And I just, like I say, document my overall journey for you guys and um, answer questions along the way. It's not just pest control. That's one thing I've been trying to um, not necessarily clear, clarify, but you know, the business is a pest control business, but everything that I talk about, it can relate a lot to, um, any service business. You know, I I talk to a lot of 
plumbers, electricians. Um, who else have I talked to recently? Roofers. I talked to a lot of roofers in the industry. Um, let's see. We're just going to go ahead and do that. There we go. Because if you're going to be a dumbass, I'll just remove you from the chat altogether. Um, yeah, I don't get, got to love uh, the internet, right? Sometimes you just got to take the trash out on these live streams. But yeah, no, we just hop in here and like we said, just have a conversation, answer your questions about starting and growing your business and um, all that type of stuff. So hopefully you guys did enjoy. As always, if you did, do me a favor and smash that thumbs up button. Um, it lets YouTube know that you guys like the streams and all that good stuff. And uh, if you're not already subscribed, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button below, hit the bell icon. That way you'll be notified every time we go live or upload another video. Last I checked, we're like two or three subs away from 2,500. Um, I mean, I know that's not like big or anything. Like I'm not some big old YouTuber or anything like that. But I remember when I first started my channel, I was like, man, if I can just get a thousand subscribers, like that'd be pretty cool. And here we are, we're like two or three away from hitting 2,500. So if you're not already subscribed, do me a favor, smash that subscribe button, hit the bell icon. Y'all know the drill, not gonna preach it. And if you're not already, like I said, in our Discord group chat or Facebook group, feel free to join those in the description box of the live stream. They're in my link tree specifically, I should clarify that. Any link that I refer to is in my link tree in the description box. And um, yeah, appreciate y'all. Have a good rest of your Sunday. And I'll see you on the next one.